What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international cinematographer and colorist, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Joker. Specifically, these split complementary color schemes here, and we are going to be applying that to this clip here. Now, there's a few important things to note about the Joker before we get into color grading. The first one is that this film was shot on an Aria Alexa. However, that's not the special part. They actually went as far as to create a custom Kodak film LUT to emulate the original film stock they used to shoot the Joker on in the first movie. So there will be some nuances in the final color. The next thing that I wanted to know is that this color grading technique does not work on every clip you have. It works on a very specific type of set. In my DaVinci Resolve color grading course, we really dive into the concept of color theory. This allows us to know which color grades will work with each set we have and also allows us to leverage the available color schemes that we have on our set to create cinematic color grades that convey the right emotion to our audience that we've been wanting to do the entire time. But more importantly, when we use this knowledge of color theory, it allows us to break free from tradition and start creating art through color. And that is the dream of every colorist. If you are looking to take your color grading to the next level, there is a link in the description down below and in the card up top where you can enroll in the course. Without further ado, roll intro. All right, guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and I just want to note something real quick, and that was why I chose this specific clip to work with. In my DaVinci Resolve color grading course, one of the things we talk about when it comes to color grading is the importance of set design and how that is going to affect our color later. This is why directors and colorists work together because specific set designs really can affect how your color is pulled off. So this set in particular very closely matches what we have in the Joker. We have some whites that we can add some colors into and we have these neutrals, this background right here. That's really going to allow us to push in that teal green tone that we saw in our original clip. And then we also have a skin tones which we can bring back to a neutral. So the first step that I'm going to take is I'm going to correct this log image. This is shot in red code raw in the red wide gamut color space. And the original Joker footage was shot on an Aria Lexus. So I'm gonna use this trick that I used to color grade my footage. We're gonna convert it into Rec 709, but first we're gonna go into Aria Log C. That way we can kind of match the colors a little bit um, through the camera. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the raw tab here and we're gonna go to gamma curve and we're gonna change it to linear. Now that we're working from the linear data from the sensor, we're gonna go into open effects and we're gonna add a color space transform to node one. And we're going to select our input. So that is the red wide gamut RBG. And we're going to select linear as our input gamma. Then we're going to go into Aria Alexa and Airy Log C. From there, we're gonna go into node three and we're gonna add another color space transform. That is gonna take us from Airy Log C here in node two into Rec 709. So Airy Alexa, Airy Log C, because that was, when we go to our first node, that was our output. And then we're gonna go into Rec 709. And then we're just gonna go ahead and tick luminance mapping and the tone mapping method. Now that we're into Rec 709, we're gonna go into node two and we're gonna grade in Airy Log C. This is where I'm gonna add my contrast and this is where I'm going to just add just a little bit of mid-tone detail to add that mid-tone contrast. We're gonna set our black point, which I want that about here. And remember, these are not specific values. This is just all to get the scene to match what we're going for. And then I'm just gonna bring my highlights about right here. And then I'm gonna add a simple S curve in there to get the contrast I'm going for. And then the S curves, we just drop the shadows there. Now we're just gonna bring up the highlights right about here. And then we're gonna add mid-tone detail so we can see here, this just adds mid-tone contrast. And we start at a default value of zero. And I'm just gonna add up to about 60, let's go 63. 
why did I add that specific value for mid-tone detail in there? That is because I want it to cut through this haze. You can see here, this is a pretty hazy image. It's a pretty soft image. And the Joker image is pretty soft, but I wanna be able to cut through some of that haze right here. Next, we're gonna go into node four. Node four is all about skin tone qualification. So let me step back here just a little bit. And then we go ahead and we're gonna go into our qualifier. Now, his skin tones match colors in here closely. It matches this red, matches this red right here, um, and it matches almost this orange right here. So I'm gonna use a 3D qualifier to get the most specific selection of the midtones. And I'm gonna make sure my selection or my highlight icon is ticked. And I'm just gonna select the midtones of his skin. So right there, right about here. Add a little bit of denoise to clean that up. And then I'm gonna add some clean whites to really just select his skin. Now you might be saying, hey, Sydney, it's falling off in the shadows right here. I want that because when we look at the original Joker scene, we do see that there is a cooler side to one side of his face. So that's what I'm really trying to mimic here. Now that we have qualified our skin tones, I wanna to bring them to neutral. What do I mean by neutral? When we look at the Joker, his skin tones aren't overly orange. It's actually, we just brought them back to the neutral undertone of his skin. So there is some correction that's gonna be needed to be done here. His skin tones are a little bit on the red side. So we're gonna take out that red and then we're gonna add in just that yellow undertone to his skin to really neutralize it. And then we're gonna add in some highlights. So in my primary wheel, I'm just gonna drop down and add in a little bit of blue to the offset of his skin. That right there, just neutralize some of that red that we have here. We're taking out that magenta and that pink. Now I'm gonna go into my log wheels. We're gonna have a little bit more fun with this. So again, same thing here. In the offset to affect the overall whole tone of the skin, I'm dragging out that warmth. And now I'm actually pulling away from red too. So I'm not just dropping down to the green to remove the magenta. I am actually taking out the red as well. So that's why I just made that minor correction there. Then in the mid-tones, I'm gonna push a yellow color. So we're gonna go minus 11, I'm gonna go up to minus one, and then over to keep it in just right about there. Cool. So now that we've adjusted our skin tone colors, we're going to play with the low and the high range. So I'm gonna drop the low range down because I know that's exactly where I want the low point to be. And all we're adjusting is that low and the black point. So I'm gonna set that right there. And then I'm just gonna boost the high range up just a bit so I can set where my white point is gonna be. And I feel like right there, we can look before and after on a skin. We've drawn it back to neutral. We've brought it, we've taken out all of those red undertones that you can see there. We brought a skin to neutral. That is the foundation to the skin portion of the orange. Cause remember when we're doing a complementary color grade, we have an orange color in our color scheme. We have a teal or a blue color in our color scheme. So now let's go ahead and add that and we can see this look come together. So we add a node, node five is going to be our color grade and then we add a layer and we still add the alpha output. So think of this as a green screen. We're just creating a nice clean palette green screen so that all of our corrections don't affect the skin tones. Our skin tones are completely keyed out. That's why we add that blue line there. Now we're going to go ahead and go into node five. This is where we're going to create that look. So using our knowledge of color theory, we're going to need a purple blue in the shadows, a pure blue in the midtones, and then we can play around with the highlights as needed. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to push this purple, blue, and the shadows. Now the color in the midtones used in the Joker it's a specific type of teal they use. It's not so much just a, a blue, it's almost on the greener side. So I'm gonna push that mid-tone color closer to the green side in our blue. So normally we'd shoot for right here. I'm gonna push it more into that greener tone as we transition from blue to green. So now we're here. We're not gonna adjust our low range and our high range yet. The next thing I know is that I want the highlights in this area to also be on that cooler side as well. 
Now here's how we actually get that teal color to show up. We're gonna adjust that low range and that high range again. And I just adjust this to my liking until I feel that it actually fits the scene. So I'm actually gonna bring this all the way down. And I'm gonna bring this one all the way up. Now we have that teal color in there. And you can see here before and after, this is what we've accomplished. Now, I feel like this is just a little too soft. I wanna add a punch of contrast in, so we're gonna go on our curve here, still in node five. We're gonna bring that contrast down right there. So far, I think we're looking good. So we've started here. Here's our before coming out of Airy Log C and Direct 709 with our exposure corrections and our after. So now let's go ahead and just add in some other fine points to our color grade. One of the things that I noticed in the Joker was that a lot of the highlights had this really sharp blue green to them, a really sharp teal. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in this area and in this area. So we're gonna add another node in our layer still. So in node eight now, we're gonna use a regular HSL qualifier here in node eight. We're just gonna select those lights. Go ahead there. Getting those highlights in, it's okay if we get a little bit of spillage there, that's fine. We'll clean that up in a second. I'm just offsetting to that color that we saw there in the Joker, that sharp blue-green, completely pushing the offset. We'll denoise. Let's look at this again. We'll denoise a little bit. Clean white. And boom. So now we have that nice teal color in there and that highlights. We see how that affected these highlights here in the wine cabinet or in the liquor area. That's not wine, that's liquor. Um, and now we're just gonna do the same thing here. Now this isn't gonna be perfect. There is no magic solution for this red that we have here, um, but I still think it complements the scene. It adds almost a split complementary look to it, but it's not quite on the magenta side. So we can't truly call it split complementary. It's just on that spectrum of orange and red. So it still fits. It's still a nice color contrast. So this is where we're gonna use a power window and I'm not going to track it. But in theory, that's what you would do is you would track it, the power window, the mast area over here so that we can make sure it stays there the entire time. We're going to go into node nine. I'm just gonna use a polygon. I'm just gonna come from here to here to here about where his arm is. This is not a perfect way to do it. There's easier ways, but this is the way I'm going to do it for the sake of the tutorial and the time. And again, this is just something you would track or eliminate altogether. You don't have to do this. You're gonna push that, that same teal color we're going for there. So try to match it up with the rest of the color. So that kind of matches up with that now. Then we turn off our ability to see the power window. Let's soften it up. Actually, let's clean that up one real quick. We're gonna go back into power window because I noticed I did that. We're gonna clean that up right there. Now we turn that off. And then we're gonna soften. Boom, blend it, see that? Blend. So we've started from here, before, corrected our skin tones in node four, brought them back to neutral, and then added our look. And this is what our look looks like. This is why we key out the skin tones. And that right there is how I would go about creating this look. The last thing I would do is I would go into output blanking and just add in that cinematic aspect ratio. And I think we have a great before and after. So again, looking at the beginning, this is what we started with, then we added in our look. And even here, we can go back and tweak the midtones a bit and still pull them back to even more neutral by taking that red out right there. And I think that's actually a better representation of how the Joker's skin tones looked in the actual film than the warmer ones we had when we went through, but that's all about the process of color grading. We're gonna go back and we're going to make adjustments as needed. Well guys, simply put, that is how I would go about creating the Joker look. It's very straightforward once you understand the color theory of a complementary color scheme, teal and orange used in this case, you are able then to adequately apply it to certain areas in your film 
and everything works out the best. Orange is commonly used because it's our skin tones. If you guys would like to dive in more on the concept of getting perfect skin tones in post-production and which color schemes are available out there so we can break away from the traditional teal and orange, be sure to head to the link in the description down below and in the card up top to enroll in my color grading course and take your color grades to the next level and become truly independent artists that don't have to watch YouTube tutorials anymore. If you guys found this video helpful, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and leave a comment down below if you guys would like me to do more of the films that were nominated for Best Picture, because I definitely want to do Ford versus Ferrari next. Also, be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. Remember, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.